This is the new M1 iPad Air, and this is Apple's current M1 MacBook Air. If you can only afford one of them, do you buy an iPad or do you buy a MacBook Air? My instinct and my hunch is that I would prefer to buy an iPad. iPads are fun to use. I love this blue MacBook Air. But the problem with iPads is that they do some things exceptionally well, but for other things, it's just easier and faster to use a MacBook Air. And you're gonna see why throughout this video. The most surprising thing about the iPad is how great the typing experience is with the Magic Keyboard. It feels great, the key travel is fantastic, and the aesthetic is spot on. I really don't have many complaints here. It feels just as good as a MacBook Air keyboard. Yes, the footprint of the Magic Keyboard for iPad is smaller than the footprint of the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has a bigger trackpad, a bigger chassis, more space for each key, and a dedicated function key row to control brightness, volume, and more. From my experience, however, the size didn't matter in this case. Typing emails, creating Word documents, responding to text messages were equally as good on the small iPad Air as it was on my 13-inch MacBook Air. So pick and choose your poison. They're both really good at this task. On the other hand, when it comes to consuming content, it's a different beast. Although both of these devices can consume the exact same kind of thing, so the Netflix, the YouTube, and the Disney Pluses of the world, one is better than the other for certain situations. The iPad is more fun to use on the go, but the MacBook Air is way better to use when you're at home, and I'm gonna show you why. The iPad Air supports 5G connectivity, which changes the game. It effectively turns this device into the ultimate portable content machine when you're outside your house. I cannot tell you how convenient it is to have my iPad Air constantly connected to 5G and not needing a hotspot or a public Wi-Fi connection. I'm able to instantaneously watch videos, browse the internet on Safari, or FaceTime someone from the convenience of a laptop-like experience. You simply cannot do this with the MacBook. You have to rely on public Wi-Fi or a hotspot from your smartphone. But when it comes to being at home, things change. The MacBook Air is by far the better option in my opinion. You get a noticeably bigger display and you also get a much better set of speakers. I also find the MacBook Air to be a lot more comfortable in bed, on the couch, and in many positions where I just wanna relax. I find the iPad Air to be a tad bit too small and top heavy, especially when you use it with the Magic Keyboard to enjoy it for extended periods of time at home. And to continue the topic of comfort, the MacBook Air can connect to a monitor and you can connect an external keyboard and mouse and essentially get a great desktop experience. The iPad can do this too, but it is a little clunky. It does not support the full resolution, so you get this awkward look on your monitor where you have these giant black bars on the left and right. I'm sure I could use my iPad in that way and it could be somewhat comparable to connecting my MacBook to the monitor as well but the point still stands that the MacBook simply does this whole desk setup thing a lot better than the iPad. Let's pause the video to introduce today's video sponsor, Anchor. They kindly sent over their brand new Nano 2 65 watt charger. It features two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. It can charge your MacBook Air in just two hours, when connected on its own, or you can feel free to connect an iPad and an iPhone and charge three devices at the same time with no interruptions. The best thing about this charger though is how small it is for 65 watts of power. Compared to Apple's 67 watt charger, it is so much smaller and has the added benefit of more ports. So if you guys are interested in a portable and powerful charger for your Apple devices, you can find the Anchor Nano 2 65 watt charger in a link in the top of the description down below. Thank you again, Anchor, for sponsoring today's video. As for creative applications such as photo editing, video editing, or even music production, 
It's far superior on the MacBook Air in every single way except one that I will give in favor to the iPad. But let me set the record straight here. You still can achieve great results in things such as photo editing or video editing on the iPad with apps like Affinity Photo, Lightroom, and LumaFusion. And to be honest with you, I spend a lot more time editing photos on my iPad than I do on my MacBook Air. But the problem is I just simply own both devices and this video is all about picking one or the other. And if I had to pick one, it is very clear that the MacBook Air is a more capable, creative, professional machine. But there's one instance where the iPad just shines as bright as the sun, and that is when it comes to drawing and digital art. With the purchase of an Apple Pencil, you simply get the best drawing experience on any computer today. I'm not a digital artist myself, so I can't speak too heavily into this topic, but what I do know is that I've seen nothing but praise for how great it is to draw and create art on the iPad with the Apple Pencil with applications such as Procreate. You can also use the iPad to take an unlimited number of notes in applications like Notability. This feature alone is a game changer for students watching this video or for people who are learning something new and you just prefer to write down notes instead of type them. What about gaming? I, I think the answer is pretty clear here. If you're a casual gamer, I think the iPad is gonna be a much better experience than the MacBook Air for a variety of reasons. To start, there is a massive suite of optimized iPad games on Apple Arcade and the App Store. And then when you couple that with 5G connectivity, you now have an always online portable gaming device. Yes, some of these games are actually also available to download on the MacBook because the Mac does support a variety of different iPhone and iPad apps and games, but I think for the vast majority of you, it's just more fun to play on iPad. If you're a hardcore gamer, however, I, I just wouldn't even consider uh, getting an iPad or a Mac if you need to have a gaming like machine. I would really budget in thinking about getting a PC, a PS5, an Xbox, literally anything but an iPad or a Mac, if, if you're a hardcore gamer. As for battery life, my iPad Air is noticeably losing battery faster than my MacBook Air. The iPad Air can last up to 10 hours, give or take, on a single charge, whereas the MacBook can punch up to 20 hours on a single charge. I have gone multiple days not needing to charge the MacBook Air, and I wanna make that very, very clear. That is a huge deal. This is a multi-day battery life machine. Whereas on the iPad Air, I find myself almost always needing to charge it every single day. Something we haven't touched on yet is the differences between iPad OS and Mac OS. And let me tell you, there is a lot of differences, but I think there's one that matters the most and that applies to the majority of us, and that's multitasking. When it comes to multitasking on the iPad, you have features such as split view, where you can have two windows open side by side. You can also do something called slide over, where you can have one app open on top of other apps open in view. This works great in theory, but on a 10.9 inch display, I don't really find myself wanting to multitask in this way too often because things just feel very cramped in my opinion. When it comes to the MacBook Air, you get a much more traditional desktop experience. You have complete control over the size of your windows, where they are placed, and the dock of apps is visible at all times. And the display is just simply bigger. I'm more likely to multitask on the MacBook Air because of the size of the screen alone. So there you have it. These are all of the real world differences that I think will apply in your daily use between the iPad Air and the MacBook Air. But the one thing we haven't touched on yet is the money, the price. How much is it gonna cost me to get into one device or the other? The iPad Air starts at $599 and on its own, it's not a capable replacement for the MacBook. It would help a lot if you budgeted in a Magic Keyboard, but that's gonna run you about an extra $300. And if you really wanted that drawing and note-taking capacity, that's going to be an additional $129.
So the total cost for the best iPad experience is gonna come around $1,028. The MacBook Air starts at $999. So technically the iPad Air is a more expensive endeavor, but the pricing doesn't even tell the whole story. There are also differences in the spec sheet. For the entry-level MacBook Air, you get a 256 gigabyte SSD storage, two Thunderbolt ports, eight gigs of RAM, an M1 chip, and a 13 inch display. For the entry level iPad Air, you get a 64 gigabyte SSD, one USB-C port, eight gigabytes of RAM, an M1 chip, and a 10.9 inch touchscreen display. So on paper, although the iPad is comparable in cost to the MacBook Air, even after factoring in the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil, you actually walk away with less in other key areas. You walk away with less storage, you have a much smaller display, you have less ports and less powerful speakers. And the one thing I really wanna highlight here is that if you're gonna choose the iPad to be your main computer, I don't think the base storage of 64 gigabytes is going to be enough. You'd wanna upgrade to the extra 256 gigabyte total but that's gonna cost you around $150. Bringing the price from what I'm seeing to $1,178. And then if you wanna throw in cellular connectivity, so 5G, that's gonna run you an extra or a total cost of $1,328. So that's almost $350 more than a MacBook Air. So anyways, with all of that, being said, which device do you choose? If you absolutely need to draw or take notes on a touchscreen display, the iPad Air is the obvious choice. It's the best tablet for its price that can double as a laptop. But it's the doubling as a laptop where things get complicated for the iPad. If your computing needs are not too complex, where you just want to consume content, you wanna browse the internet and social media, or even wanna just do some basic video editing and photo editing, you could absolutely get away with just an iPad. But the second you turn the notch up on complexity for the things you wanna do with an iPad, that's where things start to fall apart. The MacBook Air is simply the best laptop you can buy and does the laptop things far better than an iPad. And honestly, that doesn't even surprise me. Apple would prefer to have the iPad and the MacBook Air exist in unity instead of against each other. But for the sake of this video, if I had to pick one device, I truly do believe that the MacBook Air would be the better choice for most people over the iPad. The MacBook just gives you the infinite possibility to literally do anything you want on that computer besides being able to touch the screen. So if you absolutely need to have a touchscreen and to draw and, and take notes on a touchscreen panel, it's almost always gonna be the better choice for you, at least today, to pick a MacBook Air over an iPad Air. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're brand new to my channel, and comment down below hashtag iPad Air or hashtag MacBook Air and let me know which device you would choose and why. I would love to know in the comments down below. But anyways, catch you guys all in the next video. Peace.